Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about how I managed to fix an almost nine gigabyte memory leak in Cargo, which is the uh, package manager tool chain for Rust. Uh, and how I kind of got nerd sniped into fixing this. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so this is a work thing. Uh, fortunately, Sentry is open source, so I can completely talk about everything that I did here. Um, Sentry is mostly a Python shop, but has Rust for a few key components, one of them being the uh, <laughs> symbolication. I'm pretty sure that's a made up word, uh, but basically uh, symbol demangling and other stuff. And this is written in Rust. There's a few core components written in Rust at uh, Sentry as well. And I was a little bit nerd sniped into fixing this and triaging, figuring out what was wrong. Uh, so the reason that I got roped into this, uh, admittedly, I was happy to help as, as usual, is this build for release 873 failed right next to a setup tools warning. And Armin, who works on this project, you may know Armin because he made Flask and a bunch of other important Python things. Uh, Armin was like, oh, I know Anthony knows a bunch about setup tools, so we're going we're gonna to see if he can fix this problem. Um, we got this mysterious setup tools warning. Turns out setup tools didn't matter at all. This warning just happened to appear at that particular place. Uh, but we got this weird error 247. Now I did some searching around in this and there were kind of two uh, trains of thought on why this might happen. Uh, one of them was 247 is 255 minus eight. And uh, if you're familiar with exit codes from signals, usually it's 127 minus eight, but some programs get it wrong and do it from 255. So my thought was maybe signal eight was happening here. Signal eight is floating point exception. And this is a cross compile. So we're actually running ARM64 in an emulator on x86-64. And if you've ever dealt with emulators before, you know they're not very perfect. And sometimes you get weird things like floating point exceptions. But I thought maybe that was the problem. Uh, the other train of thought on the um, you know, Google results was a memory error. I didn't think it was a memory error at first because there's no reason that the memory would have gone up or down, but it turns out it was. So we'll, we'll get to that eventually. Uh, but the first thing that I tried to do was eliminate any potential changes that were between the last known working build and the current working build. So we did a few things with that, like trying to rebuild the old release, trying an older version of Manilix, trying an older Rust C, even recommitting a cargo lock file to force back the old dependency versions. We had basically tried everything to reproduce the old code, uh, but it turns out there was an external change that we still didn't even know what it was. Um, so kind of running out of ideas, I decided to try and reproduce this locally and see if I could poke into it and see exactly what was going on. So I went to my virtual machine. You'll notice this is a different virtual machine than I usually deal with. And that is because we are about to run a, uh, not that one, uh, a bit of a scary looking command. So not only are we doing sudo docker, we're also running in privileged mode. And either of those should set off alarm bells. Uh, but this is this special little tool called bin format. What it does is it installs a Kemu emulator, Q-E-M-U, um, which allows you to run Docker containers of different architectures. In this case, we're gonna install the ARM64 architecture so I can run ARM Docker images on my x86-64 machine. Quite a mouthful. Uh, but we run this, you'll notice that it's already registered because I've had to re-record this, so. <laughs> um, this performs some kind of wild side effects to your system that I'm not comfortable in my primary virtual machine, so that's why I have this secondary one here. Uh, all right, so now that we've set up an ARM64 emulator for Docker, we can run this ARM64 build and hopefully reproduce the same set of failures that we saw here. But what I also did is I set up top so I could watch resource utilization while this happened because there was an inkling that it might be memory related. And then we ran the uh, make target. Now notice this is a different image than the actual one. I've pre-built some stuff so that it doesn't take so long to actually do the full build here. Uh, it's also running out some path stuff. You can ignore that. Um, but you'll notice that it starts running here. We are running a wheel build, which is about to do a cargo build. Cargo being the you know, Rust package manager. And the first thing it does that is this updating crates.io index. Now I'm actually gonna ship, uh, switch this into uh, memory, sorting by memory from the top. And we're gonna put, I think it's E. Yeah, 
we're going to adjust this so that we can see this in uh, more human readable units. Where's Megabyte? This one. And you'll notice that we're not even doing the build yet. We're running updating crates.io index, which is basically just Cargo pulling down metadata about the latest versions of dependencies that are on their package storage system. And you'll notice that we're we're chewing up quite a bit of memory here. I guess I can show this over here so that you can see the, that it's definitely cargo that's going here. And this memory just keeps going up and up and up. Now, allocating a bunch of memory usually isn't necessarily a problem as long as it gets freed later. Uh, but in this situation, cargo is gobbling up a bunch of memory to do this updates crates.io thing, and it's not going down. And we'll see as soon as it gets past here, it's that memory is going to stay high forever. I guess we can run it here so we can see it on both of them. Uh, but we're looking at almost nine gigs of RAM. And I don't know how much RAM the GitHub Actions runners have, but my guess is it's somewhere around 16 gigs, if I had to guess. And even that's quite a lot to allocate to a CI system. Uh, but it's, you know, these processes take quite a bit of RAM. Um, and so that was my first thought, like, oh, this is even before the build starts, so it's probably not our code that's the problem. It's probably whatever this updates crates.io index is. So I decided to take a little Google search to find this. I'll skip the Google search since I actually, I already know what the fix was and I already have a link to it, and I'll just grab you the link here. Um, but it turns out this is not a new problem. Uh, a bunch of people have also run into this as well in that uh, cargo update uses a C library called libgit2. I know, all the, all the Rust people are like, oh, but, but managed memory and there's no memory leaks because Rust's and yeah, well, if you embed a C library, you're kind of at the mercy of whatever the C library does. Uh, but it turns out that this is mostly due to a bug in libgit2, uh, which probably doesn't have this problem in x86 is u4, but specifically because this is emulated and ARM and there's all sorts of other uh, <laughs> wildcard things going on here. Um, but because of libget2, this process takes an extremely long time and consumes this memory and never frees it. So that's what I ended up finding through a little bit of searching. Yeah, here's, here's me saying exactly the same thing. And eventually what this caused is when the Rust compiler actually kicked in and needed that RAM, it couldn't because Cargo was holding, you know, nearly nine gigs of RAM to do, well, it, it leaked. It, <laughs> it was done doing its process, but you know, still still held on to it. Now, no, uh, another thing, you know, emulation's really slow, so that's why we haven't gotten past this yet. Usually this takes a couple of seconds in, um, in non-emulated mode, but... But anyway, found that, uh, and that's why we were running out of memory here, and when this ran out of memory, it happened to print this because I think setup tools flushed the buffer or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, but that caused this um, entire Docker container to get torn down and exit with code 247. Okay, cool. We've gotten past the download here. So you can see it is still holding on to those nine gigs of RAM before it even starts doing this compilation here. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna kill this because I don't actually care for it to run and show you how I fixed it. Docker PS bad password. Uh, and the reason I have to do sudo is I haven't added my user to the Docker group on this machine because. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's the problem. You know, update index takes nine gigs of RAM. Now, how do we fix it? Uh, fortunately, this gave me the hint, uh, which is that because it's using embedded libget2, we have this problem. So let's avoid embedded libget2. And you can do that by setting this little configuration option here. I did that by adding this to the build. Of course, uh, this isn't the actual build, so there's some other, I've commented this out just so that it's faster through the video. Um, but if we run this again, We'll notice that it gets past that uh, update step much quicker and it doesn't consume a whole butt ton of RAM. <laughs> and that's how I fixed this problem. And that's how we were able to get a successful re release out without, uh, without you know, chewing up all the RAM. So you'll notice now that we're running this and we're no longer, there's no cargo process consuming a bunch of RAM. Uh, we should sort by memory and put it into megabytes. 
uh, you will notice that there is a git process that's consuming a bunch of CPU, but we're not chewing a bunch of RAM. So that's that solved that solved our problem for us. And yeah, that was uh, that was how I saved a release and uh, was able to make this quick little change set to save a bunch of RAM uh, with cargo. Anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, this is a little bit different than my usual videos, but I figured, I don't know, I thought it was cool, so I was going to share it with you guys. If you have additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.